How you going? This is the Sleeper Koala and I'll be showing you a new feature that you can use in Unity version 2021.2 or later. Do you, like me, often find yourself searching through your few hundred folders looking for that one prefab or image? If so, you, my friend, need some serious help. Luckily for us, Unity has heard our cries and provided us with a fantastic new search feature to help improve our workflow. So, let's get into it. Continuing the trend, you can access this feature in four ways. One, located in the top right corner of the editor, you can click the magnifying glass. Two, you can go to edit in the top menu and select search all. Three, you can go to window, heading over to search and select new window. Or you can simply press control K as I just did. Alright, I'll be guiding you with my cursor. So starting from the top, there are six sections. Number one, the search field for all your queries. Two, the save searches. This is where you will locate your favorite searches. It's pretty straightforward. You can save searches locally within your app data folder or to the project to share it with your team or repository simply by using these save icons. You can hide or show this pane using the top left icon. Now heading over to number three, we have the cert providers, which by default starts you off with project and hierarchy with the choice to add more search providers using the more options icon. So these three little dots. All right. All right. Heading over to number four, while the results are really straightforward in meaning, Unity has developed this section to learn over time based on what you search for providing a better searching experience overall. You can also choose what to display by selecting a search provider to narrow down your search further. When you find what you are looking for, you can favorite it for faster access next time. So just gonna quickly do a search. And you will see Marcus favorite here. Heading over to number five, we have the preview inspector. It works just like the regular inspector. You can show or hide it using the top right inspector icon. And F4. Finally, views and preferences, which is number six. Um, with this, you can use this section to customize how large you want your results to be or in what fashion. So as you see, I can use the slider. Uh, zoom in and out. Uh, when you zoom in, it sets you to grid view. Well, if you just want a list view, you can of course just press the button. Um, the cogwheel on the right takes you to the preference window. Uh, don't worry about that for now. Now let's go back to our search field. You will find that besides searching for an object or asset, uh, by just the traditional way of just typing in a string or number. Instead, we can use what's known as search expressions, which uses Unity's search expression language. Now, we can do this in several ways, each being more complex. Let's start with a simple expression. For instance, a general query. I want to find a specific sprite or perhaps all sprites within my hierarchy so selecting the hierarchy search provider, I will need to use T colon sprite to display all current sprites used within all sprite renders within the hierarchy. Depending on the situation, you may also do the same within the project search provider. You, of course, generally would want to use the T texture search expression or texture 2D if you're using Unity 2D when doing so. Continuing, say that we want to know how many texture 2D files there are for whatever reason. We can use the count function. So just going to go ahead and add it in now. Yep. And you see that Unity automatically searches for it. So under count, we can see that there are 15 files uh, that represent texture TD 
itself. Um, but say uh, we were adding another couple of types into the expression, like, uh, bear with me, T shader, and perhaps T audio clip. We get three different results that are all named count. Since by adding the new types, the search parser will treat them as three separate queries as they are within the function's curly braces. Anyways, these new counts aren't exactly something we can keep track of properly. And so to fix this issue, we will be using aliases, which are pretty simple to use. We simply have to add the as keyword followed by how we want to be known. So capital T, so texture 2D and shader. So by adding an alias to all of them, we can see that it's possible to differentiate the different counts now. Now, search expressions can and will make use of literals. This means that if you search using a string, let's say hiker, it doesn't matter if you use single or double quotes, you will get results that all contain the word hiker in some manner, as you can see. The same goes for numbers. If you type in a number, it will display results that contain that number. You can also use string and number literals within a set, which the search expression parser will assume the elements of a set are literals, which is helpful and done through these square brackets. Now, say we wanted searches that sort according to our needs. Pretty simple to do. We start their search expression with a sort function. followed by curly braces, within which we pass in what we want to search for. I'm going to go with a set, seeing as how I haven't provided an actual example. So just typing in my set, I'm going to fast forward it, of course. You could write the set differently with all keywords instead of commas, if you so choose. Uh, we then follow this by a comma, so after the square bracket, and add a AND prefix, then choose a selector. I'm going to choose extension and fix my mistake. Alrighty, with that closed up with another curly brace. Now, a selector is an identifier that's denoted using the at symbol uh, slash prefix that you can use to access the property of an individual search item, an asset in our case. There are many identifiers to choose from. I'll do a quick rundown. Starting with the base selectors, we have ID, value, label, disk, or otherwise known as description. The base selectors are all self-evident, except for the value selector that can be changed with functions. So it won't always be the same. Continuing, we have the typical generic selector, which among others, uh, name, size, path, extension, and provider. Again, these are also self-evident, each having something to do with what represents an aspect of the search item. 
If you ever want to search for items based on serialized properties or material properties, add a hash symbol after the and symbol, followed by one of their properties. So you could choose height or width, it's really up to you. So moving our attention back to the search window, we can see a unified list of search items and the total items count displayed by the provider. For my record, I want to separate that total based on the literals within the set. And I'll do this by using the expand operator. So to do this, I'm going to add the count function to the expression. Um, so it will be within the sort function. Uh, yep, that's about right. And then to the left hand side of the T, we're going to add the expand operator. So three full stops, three dots, whatever you like to call them. Uh, right, so we're, now we can see the total count of all three literals separately, but um, there's a slight issue. I know for a fact that I don't have that many texture 2Ds or shaders. So let's further separate the values by using the group by function within which we will use the type selector. Right, so just adding on your group by function within the count. Adding another curly brace. Right, now we have accurate uh, total item counts of each literal. Before we end the video, I want to show you a few more remarkable aspects of the new search feature. Now, heading over to preferences, which you can either do by going to edit preferences or just clicking the little cogwheel icon. We're going to ignore everything except for the search engine section. We will set object selector, project selector and scene to advanced within their drop down menus. Doing so allows us to fully utilize the new search feature, giving us more search control within the hierarchy and project windows. For example, closing out of preferences, we can directly type in search expressions within the search bar now. We can directly type in search expressions within the search bars now, negating the need for opening the search window. So, I don't know, I'll just go T, T sprites. <clears throat> and as you can see, every game object that has a sprite will be located within the search bar. The same would happen for if you're doing the project. So if we click open and search, we get to use a new option called synchronous search fields. Now, what this does is it allows us to see and retain our search results within the search window and scene or hierarchy. So if I were to change this to T shaders, you're going to see that now T shader is also located in the hierarchy search bar. Next is the addition to the object selector. Now gone is the traditional way of searching for sprites, textures, or an audio asset. Now we can simply use search expressions to do so for us. So just going to navigate to my hiker and going to click object selector on its sprite. Uh, we're going to see that Unity has actually pre-populated the field with a default search expression, depending on what you are trying to find. You can use a custom expression if you so wish. Now, I'm sure that some of you may have noticed that I haven't covered the API usage for search providers, nor the index manager located in preferences, and a whole lot else. Depending on feedback, I may or may not cover them in a separate video, 
Um, and I need you to understand that this video was created to cover common usage. There is still more to learn if you want to master this feature. Uh, you can see the links down below for further information if that's what you choose to do. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to like, comment if you have any questions whatsoever, and subscribe to the channel. Take it easy guys.